when I'm thinking about it as well, it's like, what a more fitting, a more fitting representation of our country couldn't be <laughs> happening in Congress. I mean, we are a very divided nation and Congress, you know, as we're, as you just articulated is just split down the middle. And we've long seen, you know, even when one party has a more sizable majority, there's all the intra-party divisions that can occur that make it hard to just assume, you know, just Republicans or just Democrats would be able to move policy. Um, but now that's going to be completely impossible. And so to get anything done, you have to compromise. And so this all feels to me a little bit like a return to where we were in the early 2000s um, after after a 50-50 split in the Senate, not nearly as narrow of a split in the House, um, there was a real return, a real uh, emergence of power at that time of a moderate, you know, sort of faction of both chambers of Congress. And in the Senate, they were, were called gangs. <laughs> and so you'd get the gang of eight or the gang of six to move policy forward. And, and those were where policymaking happened, not in leadership as we've seen in recent years. So that, that to me seems very yeah, likely to be where we're headed. I mean, I guess when we're old and sitting around, at some point we're going to realize that this concept of political parties is itself a little odd, I think. I call them sort of billion-dollar corporations because they're really just... It's like, how do you defy a country into, into basically two blocks? I find that to be bizarre, but that, that said, who, nobody cares what I think. Uh, but my point in that, Stephanie, and there is a point, is that you've got, the, you've got sort of the far left, the centrist left, the centrist right, and the far right. And when you look at the division now, I could see a situation where uh, a Joe Manchin, from Democrat from the most Republican state in the country, John Tester Montana, Lisa Murkowski, and maybe even one Mitt Romney, those three or four that could be swayed and maybe won't go with their own parties on certain things, they could become the most powerful people in Washington, literally the decision makers on major legislation. I completely agree. I mean, those are going to be the people that the Biden administration starts negotiating with, not like gets to down the road. And it, I think we're going to see a lot of in this world, who knows what this looks like, but in a normal world, a lot of meetings at the White House between these groups, a lot of engagement between the president, president-elect staff and them, um, because if Biden wants to get any of his agenda done, those are the people that are going to usher it through for him. And that's true on tax and infrastructure. It's true on health care policy and climate change. I mean, everything is going to rest with those people. And that's what our team is doing right now is, you know, taking a step back and saying, OK, if we were in the room with this moderate center, what would policy formation look like? Because they're all these folks are all very interested in being in Washington to get policy done. Uh, and so the idea that they will, you know, allow the perfect to be the enemy of the good is unlikely. So we're expecting a lot more policy making, yeah. but it, for all of it to be much more moderate. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.